Hey everyone, so we are, oh I spelled that wrong, differential. Alright, so we are moving on from U substitution and understanding separable differential equations. And clearly I know how to spell differential. Differential, I think that's right. I hope there's not, I, I might have turned an E to an A, an A to an E, I don't know. All right, so we're going to start off with some more multiple choice practice. All right, definition, a first order differential equation. So that's where the first derivative is written out equal to something. So those of you who are interested in engineering or physics, not necessarily chemistry, I don't know about chemistry. So differential equations is actually a class in college. They sometimes call it Calc 4. So if you end up being a math minor, it really depends on your major. A lot of engineers end up having to take uh, differential equations. It's very common. Uh, business, that stuff, it's really just Calc 1. But those really hard sciences, physics, maybe chemistry, um, math, of course, computer science, all take. I used to, we, we called it Diffie Qs. Okay, so a separable first order differential equation is a differential equation where you're able to separate the x's and the y's, right? So if you look, I have dy dx equals m of x over n of y, and then we're able to basically cross multiply is what we do to solve so that all the y's are on one side and all the x's are on the other. And then we're able to just integrate, right? So I'm able to integrate both sides. So we get all the y's on one side with the dy, all the x's on the other with the dx, and then we end up integrating both sides. Okay, so I want you to start by cross multi multiply and get all the y's on one side, all the x's on the other. So from here, I got dy equals 3xy squared dx. And then I need to divide both sides by y squared. So that's 1 over y squared, or I'm going to write it as y to the negative 2 dy equals 3x dx. Now it actually doesn't matter where the 3 goes. You can move it to the other side if you want. So now we're going to integrate. All right, so the antiderivative of y to the negative 2 is y to the negative 1 divided by negative 1, 3x squared over 2 plus c. So that's negative 1 over y. So in the textbook, they leave it like this. This is technically the general. They don't solve for y. I usually will solve for y. Um, but the general solution in the textbook, they leave it like that. I think that's weird. I usually will solve for y. Now, to find the particular solution, basically we're going to solve for c and then plug in. Now, notice I've only put one c. There's technically a c over here, too. So this is like c1, c2, but then c1 minus c2 is just c3. So I, I always put my c on the x side. It doesn't actually matter. Um, I just want to make my life as easy as possible. So a really picky teacher would make you put have two C's, but I'm not going to do that. Okay, so they're giving me the point 1, 2. So I'm going to plug that in. So I have negative 1 half equals 3 times 1 squared over 2 plus C. So that's 1 half, negative 1 half, and then I'm subtracting 3 over 2. So that's negative 2 equals C. So I have negative 1 over Y equals 3X squared over 2 minus 2. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this so that it's one big fraction on the right side, just to make my life easier. So negative 1 over Y equals 3X squared minus 4 all over 2. Now the reason I'm doing that is because that 1 over y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the reciprocal of both sides. 
So this becomes negative y over 1 equals 2 over 3x squared minus 4. Because negative y over 1 is just y. Right? So then I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 1. Right? So times negative 1 times negative 1. So y equals negative 2 over 3x squared minus 4. And then the last, so this is our particular solution. That's our final answer. Now, the last thing I usually do is I like to plug in just to make sure that I got my, my C value correct. So if I plug in 1, I get negative 2 over, uh-oh, did I make a mistake? I did. What did I do wrong? Over negative 1. Oh, no, that's right. <laughs> 3 minus 4 is negative 1. That's a 2, so that did work. I was thinking I was going to get a half. All right. So I know it's kind of a lot. I'm sorry. I went all over the place. So separate, antiderivative, pl put your plus C on the side of the X. Find C next. Now, I could have, when I've gotten to this point, solved for Y and left C in the problem. I, that's super complicated, in my opinion. I think it's way easier to solve for C first. But again, I have seen teachers solve for Y first, then plug in to find C. That's just silly and weird to me. Okay, your turn. So separate and find the antiderivative. So DX goes over here. Pause the video if you didn't and do this. And then I'm going to divide by the square root of 1 minus y squared. So I get 1 over the square root of 1 minus y squared dy equals x cubed dx. Okay. So then I'm going to do the antiderivative, whose derivative is 1 over 1 minus y squared. That is your arctan. So tan minus 1 of y equals x to the fourth over 4 plus c. And then again, the textbook will leave it like that, and that's your general solution. You could also, to solve for y, do just tan of both sides. So I would say the general solution is tan of x to the fourth over 4 plus c. It looks a little nicer. So that's my general solution. Now, for the particular solution, we're going to plug in. They gave me root 2 over 2, comma, 1. And it's in quadrant 1. All right, so this is why I think it's way easier to do arctan. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plug into this guy. Right. So this is arctan of 1 equals root 2 over 2 to the 4th over 4 plus c. All right, where is tan equal to 1? In quadrant 1. So that's pi over 4 equals, all right, so to the 4th, that's squared twice. So that is 4 over 64, which is an eighth. A sixteenth, just kidding. So C equals pi over four minus one over sixteen. So that's four pi minus one all over sixteen. All right. So now I'm gonna go in here. So I've got tan minus one inverse tan equals x to the fourth over four plus. 4 pi minus 1 all over 16. So then tan both sides. Tan of, and I, I would, I prefer to have one big common denominator. So let's see, this is multiply by 4, so 4x to the 4th plus 4 pi minus 1. And that's the answer. Awkward looking, but it works. Ooh, I do not want to plug in pi over 2. That's annoying. I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm not checking that. That's way too much work. 
All right. All right. Do you, I want you to try this whole problem on your own. Do the whole thing. All right. So we have cosine y dy equals x dx. That's me cross multiplying. Integrate. Whose derivative is cosine? So sine of y equals x squared over 2 plus c. And again, that would be the answer in terms of the book. Um, if I wanted our general, I would solve. I would do arc sine y equals sine minus 1 x squared over 2 plus c. Right. So that would be my general form. But I'm going to solve. I'm going to plug in to find my c value. So I've got 2 comma pi. So we've got sine of pi. Again, I'm plugging into this guy. Equals 4 over 2 plus c. Sine of pi is 0. And then minus 2. So c is negative 2. Sine y equals x squared over 2 minus 2. So y equals arc sine. And then again, I like to make one big denominator. So minus 4 all over 2. That's my answer. And this one's a little easier to figure out, right? If I plug in 2, right, if I plug in 2, I get 4. So that's tan arc sine of 0, right? Arc sine of 0, where is sine equal to 0? It is pi. Um, you'd have to be very specific about the domain, though, in this case. Why is it pi and not zero? So, but this does work. Okay, so this is your homework, and then we also have a worksheet that I'm going to have you work on the rest of class for practice. All right, we're going to spend a few days on this. This is a really, really, really important topic. Super popular um, free response question. So one of those, like, 15-minute problems and they're very popular all right have a fabulous day